Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. Today, we're going to be spotlighting one of my favorite comic book series ever by one of my favorite comic book artists ever, Mike Mignola. Mignola, not Mignola. I'm telling you, drives me nuts. I see big interviews with the guy where they're going to sit down and talk to him for 90 minutes, and the person that introduces him calls him Mignola. Educate yourselves, people. Mignola. <laughs> All right, Seed of Destruction. This came out in, I want to say, 1992. It was a long time ago. There's probably people that follow my channel that weren't even born when this comic came out. It's colored by Mark Chiarello. Um, kind of co-plotted, co-written by John Byrne. Um, Mike has said in many interviews that he just really didn't feel 100% confident Um uh, writing it on his own, and uh, he respected John Byrne. John Byrne had experience, and uh, he went to John, and, and basically, um, John helped him do it. And, uh, you know, it's a smart move. So, uh, all right, settle in, grab a beverage, and let's do this. <laughs> it's going to be super fun. All right, happy Mother's Day, by the way. I'm filming this on Sunday. It's Sunday evening, though. All right, Mike Mignola, plot and art, John Byrne script, Mark Chirello colors. Barbara Kiesel edits and Kevin Nolan logo design. Um, hmm, interesting. Who did the lettering? I don't know. Okay, so um, this coloring style, in some ways, was was a bit revolutionary for the time. Um, believe it or not, and uh, it, it is very very cool. Uh, Mike's work is beautiful in black and white. Um, if you've ever seen any of his original art, his blacks generally aren't jet black. They're they're a, a washy, more um, translucent um, black. And in the comics, they don't always read that way. But uh, if, you, if you Google Mike Mignola and select black and white art and actually see uh, full RGB scans of the the black and white art, um, they're they're really quite striking. Um, looking at the originals and it, it, it is different than this um mike is great at a lot of things in his art um but but he really um create uh creates and picks really really beautiful shots this is this is really really nicely laid out um eye level is like right about here got some people below us architecture going uh, and we're seeing the underneath plane nice shadows um and it's just perfect got uh an old school superhero the soldiers i mean most people have probably seen the first hellboy movie by now um mike is pretty good with clothes um i, I would actually say he's very good with clothes and especially within his own um sort of language of um these these heavy blacks um really great collar collar on this guy's jacket this backpack looks great the pouches he's got great perspective you've got this figure um we're above it so you see the top plane of these pouches really really important stuff um if you're gonna be a draftsman or woman um to know where your eye line is and uh commit to it what was interesting is i was uh, on instagram killing a few minutes today and uh i saw on arthur adams uh it's a cover he was working on. He lays these pretty heavy-duty grids. Um, that would be really, really confusing to me. I, I couldn't work with that many lines on a piece of uh, my board. And I'm not a fan of how Clip Studio Paint um, does the pers perspective grids, honestly. I, I think it's a great tool, but uh, people that use it, you have to be very, very careful because your perspective looks really stiff um, and uh, the buildings don't look good with those snap grids. They really don't. <laughs> telling you <laughs> you don't see it because you're too close to it you're gonna have to break away from that stuff or you're gonna have very homogenized looking work anyway this is fantastic this is great um all looks good all right here we go He's starting to ramp it up it is interesting to see the evolution of mike's art as it goes throughout the series i would say that cedar destruction is probably the most detailed of the hellboy comic series and uh this stuff is quite time consuming to fill in the blacks on pages like this not in this exact page in particular but um it, it, it can really take a lot of time and also his layout process um uh, could be pretty time consuming but he's just really really 
a solid artist. It's great. This is really good. This this book looks good on the original newsprint too. Um, looking at the digital files, it, it definitely is is very very, um, you know, clean and and more um, kind of anemic than it is on on paper. You'll find that a lot with books. Um, we did a Neil Adams uh, Super Fun Sunday, and it was kind of like that too, where like like they really actually do look quite cool on newsprint. This is great right here, man. This guy's face. This is a great pose too. <clears throat> Awesome. This is really, really cool. Classic. Who knew when he drew this how iconic this would be? I mean, it's an important beat in the story, but uh, yeah, pretty neat how it, it ended up uh, making it into the movie. And it's just, you know, a real moment. It's pretty cool. This is nice. Great shot. I definitely get the impression that Mike uses reference in his work. Um, I don't think he's worked slavishly from it, but um, I I just based on his writing style, it doesn't it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of the um, statues and things that he uses are probably from some sort of reference, and and he puts his own spin on it. But if you look in, I think the art of Mignola and, and some of his sketchbooks, I mean, you see he actually does a lot of studies too, which is smart. So um, you know. Even someone that's as stylized as Mike, and maybe you wouldn't think, um, you know, uh, is a reference because it's not photorealistic. Um, it's probably not the case. This is great. This is really good too, man. So nice. That's a the proportions on this guy are fantastic. It, it's it's feels like Mike's work, but man, that's pretty realistic. This is great too. The, the cross legs is really nice, and this the drapery. He nails it, man. He nails it. This is awesome. Beautiful. This is killer. Man, so nice. Rogues. I hadn't seen this in quite a while. This is why I picked this. This is, this is kind of a selfish pick on my part. Um, <laughs> but remember, the, the idea behind Super Fun Sunday was to revisit books that I hadn't seen in at least five years. Um, I would definitely say that this book fits that bill. I have two of the artist editions, which there are only two, but um, this uh, it's Amazing Screw on Head and um, Hellboy in Hell Part 1. It's a great pose. This is really nice, actually. This is great. I think it's Legends of the Dark Knight 55 going on memory. <clears throat> But uh, Mike did a uh, one shot of Legends of the Dark Knight, kind of in his Hellboy style or Mignola style, <laughs> and uh, it's really really good. If you haven't seen it, I would definitely check it out. Um, yeah, it's really really good. I can at some point I'll do a video of that because <clears throat> it's it's it is really really kickass. This is great, man. That is a scary looking frog. It's like a frog dog. so cool oh that's awesome yeah it's it's interesting when i see people influenced by mike because um if you fly too close to the flame you'll get burned <laughs> now it'll look too much like his work it's like you have to take the ideas from it and kind of come up with your own sort of um, application of it. And look, Mike has got a lot of influence. I mean, he's definitely influenced by Frazetta. Um, and uh, you, know, you don't really see it the way that he draws. Um, and uh, look, there's a lot of very graphic, like heavy black art out there. So um, don't, you know, a, I think he's a Japanese artist. There's a Japanese artist that I follow on Art Station. He's also on um, Instagram. I can't think of his name off the top of his head. I think his first name is Satoshi. Um, he's really good, but I mean, it's like you would think it was Mike maybe like goofing around with something, which I don't know. I sometimes wonder if that's a good call. <laughs> I don't know. That's really cool. It's cute. This is great. Really, really nice. This is a great panel, man. I mean, you get a sense of the chair that she's sitting in and you see so little of it, but it's like you can tell that's a nice chair. You can tell that this is a you know beautiful room. It's expensive. These are probably antiques. 
and he didn't draw anything, you know? I mean, he did because it, it, he understands how to suggest it, but this is powerful. This is really powerful um, and well worth um, getting involved in. This is really fantastic. That one in particular, this is nice too. <laughs> He's creepy. I have actually, I think I've seen that photo before, believe it or not. I, I recognize that. It could, it could be a coincidence, but uh, there's a photo of old photo I've seen that looks like that. Um, these are nice. This is really cool. And uh, he's not ruled per like like his panel borders can be pretty loosey goosey at times. I mean these look ruled, um, uh, but you know he'll draw lines outside of them. It's, it's, it's worth noting. These are look free free handed. You can see there's a wobble to them. You see that? So. Oh. <laughs> All right. Issue two. Nice cover. Yeah, I w oh man, that's great. I, I love the boat. <laughs> that's so crazy. Like, if your house was on the water like that, I'd be a little nervous. What What's nice about this house, I'll point out a few things, is one, <laughs> it doesn't look like it was drawn in SketchUp or Clip Studio. This this looks legit. Like, like there's a personality and a feeling to it. And uh, it's still in perspective can use the perspective grid, but just for please draw it don't freaking just have lines like all going up the perspective nothing in the real world looks like that and it looks bizarre um and uh the scale of this is very very nicely done if a six foot person was standing at this door and went into this house i feel like they could move through the rooms and it's pretty actually the door is uh, this is probably about how the height of a person but um, I've seen people that sometimes will try to draw stuff like this and the scale is off. Uh, it can look weird. So make sure that you leave room in the levels for the rooms to actually be usable. It's, it's important and, and worth uh, the effort. This is nice. This is really cool. This is very, very cool. Very strong. <clears throat> Excuse me. As I go through puberty through this, this is really good too, actually. Great shot nice he picked an interesting angle for that kind of perspective is going like this and down shot that's pretty cool hello hair boy is this about it's interesting too is you'll you'll you actually see the proportions on hellboy shift old this is a really nice too um yeah his the way he constructs his head um is a little different oh it's cool um Mike was saying something interesting in a more recent interview that uh, I had noticed in his stuff, but when he said it, it was um, it was interesting. Is the way that he draws skulls now is he draw he doesn't draw the chin, um, they're always like smooth. So like the teeth to the the base of the chin, there's no um, gap. And uh, he just he was saying kind of that he had drawn skulls so long that he finally just so he was like. I don't like that. It doesn't look good to me. I'm going to omit it. And, uh, you know, look, that's the power of, of having a style and, and, um, a language that's your own, you know, that's, that's, what's cool about it. That's the, that's the thing that you bring to the table that, that, you know, is uniquely yours. And, and that's the problem with mimicking someone like Mike is if you start bringing that stuff over into your work, um, yeah, you know, it would be funner to see what you can come up with. Really, really cool pose. This is nice too. That's really, really cool. Chunky tech, man, so nice. Perfect amount of detail too. It's so balanced and it fits so well in his world. This is great. Again, this is pretty, pretty accurate. And then this gets stylish. And this is all real, really nicely done, and it just works. It looks really good. Like, it's got nice planes there. This is really cool. Nice, a nice sense of sense of height. That's a really, really great bedroom. Man, it's so nice. <laughs> hey. That's really cool. 
was interesting too is I know that um, one of my earlier uh, Mignola, I don't know if it was a super fun Sunday, actually won some people over that weren't fans of Mike's stuff and didn't think that they liked it. Um, and they became fans after the video. I thought that was kind of cool. Like, it's hard for me to imagine because I like Mike's work so much that someone would go, nah, it's not really my thing. But, you know, everyone's taste is, is very different. Um, but yeah, it's always cool to know that, that um, these videos, that's great, man. Even though that hand is totally cropped out, man, that is so kick ass. That's great too. Really, really powerful. Um, Jack Kirby, um, I know, is another favorite of Mike's. He used to get pegged a lot with the Alex Toth thing, but he's said in many interviews that that although he respects Toth's work, it wasn't wasn't really a, an influence on his his stuff. And um, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you'll get you'll get labeled with things based on other people's perception and their their knowledge base. It's an interesting thing, but it's like. Um, I don't know, you know, you could use the example of like if someone had never seen someone's art and they don't realize that two people draw similar, they may kind of go like, oh, you draw like this guy. And you're like, uh, really, it's the other way around. They, they drew like him and they can get things kind of twisted. And then with the Internet, it's like telephone where the, the information keeps getting passed along and all of a sudden everybody thinks that, you know, you have a foundational base that doesn't exist. This is cool. So there was an interesting... I had a friend named Scott Benefield who drew a Hellboy story. And I heard this second hand. He didn't tell me, but there was something about the, the right hand of doom. Let me think if I can remember what it was. Mike had some some rule book in his mind of it was something that he wouldn't do with it and uh god what was it let me think it might take me a few minutes if not i'll put it in the comments section i'll remember it but um i think it was with the right hand that's really cool nice like again nice sense of scale here he's got this beautiful statue here and then abe sapien like standing here it's really really great and these these bodies are very very cool what was the deal with the right hand of doom How long we're into this? Let me see something really quick. 18 minutes. All right. I will be able to get through the whole series. All right. This is really, really nice. Man, that's crazy. Really, really. It, man, in black and white, this would look so great. It's very, very just stylish. This is really, really cool, too. Powerful. I'm racking my brain trying to remember what his rule was for Hellboy. <laughs> The thing's gonna crack me up every time. He's got Ace Frehley makeup on his face, and it looks like something out of a uh, Chris Cunningham <laughs> video. Oh, this is such a nice cover, man. That is really, really ridiculously cool. This is so cool. It's incredible how long this series has gone on, and Mike has basically stuck to it. E even as a fan of his, I would I would actually really enjoy seeing him draw a new series, even if it was like a mini series of something. It would be really fun to see him take on some other characters. I don't know if it'll ever happen at this point, but um, you know. You could fill in the blank of what would be cool for you, but uh, he had drawn, oh, what was it? It's like some guy in like a little space outfit or something, and, and uh, it was maybe four or five months ago, and a friend of mine sent it to me. I hadn't seen it online, and I was like, there you go. Like, I would love to read like a comic book with this, like this character. Just do something, something different, but I get it. This is his baby. 
And it, it's obviously had the most legs in terms of a, a property. I mean, he doesn't have to draw cars. That's interesting. This is really nicely laid out. He's got this really strong shape that goes like this and pulls you here. And sucks you around and then, man, just really slams you out. It's really good. This is a very memorable page. I remember when I was reading the comic the first time and I saw this and I was like, ooh, that is really cool. This too, super memorable. I almost want to say that they're side by side in the comic. I could be wrong, but I vaguely remember that this is so awesome. Again, it's got a little bit of an organic feel, which makes it nice and gives it a lot of character. That's great. Bam. Man, comics are so fun. When they're done good, they're the coolest thing. Hello, monkey. Oh, man, it's crazy. This is cool. It's nice, too. Bump, bump. Oh my god. <laughs> he has grown strong. Man, that's so cool. That's really cool, too. I, you know, it's it would be hard for me to pick my favorite of all the Hellboy mini series, but I like Wake the Devil a lot, at least for the art. We'll do this last one. This is really, really cool. Man, it's such a powerful piece. It just really looks like Hellboy's about ready to hit this guy and make him bust in about a thousand pieces. Oh, let's see something. Kevin, no. It's weird that they don't say who lettered this. I, get, I mean, it could have been Mignola, but I don't know, it's just a little weird. I'll, to check, I'll check my original comic. I'd be curious if we lettered it. I'm thinking about lettering more because of Blaster Kid, because it's it, it, it's one of those things where, like, well, i got to write my book, and I'm going to pencil it, and I'm going to ink it, and I'm probably going to color it, but I don't really want to letter it. I mean, I, I obviously could get, like, like the fonts and do it, but um, I actually think I'm going to hire a professional letterer to do it, and... Uh, I may even bring on an editor. I actually talked to a friend of mine who um, is a professional editor to edit it. Because uh, I'm looking at this as a very professional project. This isn't just like, uh, you know, doing it to be doing it. So Oh, it's so cool. Man, that's sick. I haven't seen this in so long. Well, I gotta go back to this. That this is really, really nice. I mean, man, this is great too. It's like has anatomy. That just looks solid. Like if you hit that, like he is like ripped. Oops, sorry. Let's go this way. This is really, really good too. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, it's so cool. Love these. He did Cosmic Odyssey, and I mean, I, I have almost everything that he's done. There's this, He did a couple of Superman issues back in the 80s that um, have a little bit of sort of this kind of stuff in it. There's also, I think it's a Hellraiser story that he did that's really cool. Um, Chronicles of Quorum, or Quorum. Um, there's a lot. Fafford and the Grey Mauser. 
I think I said Cosmic Odyssey. Iron Wolf. Iron Wolf is really good. This is great. Dracula. He did a lot of Marvel Comics Presents covers, too. They're actually pretty cool. They're worth getting. I've, I've picked them all up in, like, dollar boxes over the years. That's really cool. It's a great pose. I love his sword, how crooked it is. Or, like, the, the just the interesting shape on it is great. This is nice. So killer. Man, that's great. Some bright colors. Holy Moses. Now his eyes are a little more orange. <laughs> That's really cool. Oh, wow. Epic. Uh-oh. What's going to happen, guys? Oh, my God. Is that it? Oh, my God. It's over. All right. Have a great day. You can smash the like. That would be cool. Um, I'm really, really busy. So um, I'm not 100% sure when I'm going to be back. But um, I'm working away on Blaster Kid. The final script is done. And... Uh, I'm off to the races drawing the book. So it is on like Donkey Kong and uh, you know, I'm going to make it look as nice as I can and get it done as quickly as possible. I'm not a lagger. I'm, you know, someone that's can actually do full books. So uh, I'm on it. It looks to be somewhere probably in the 80 to a hundred page range, something like that. So I'm going to try to hit around 80 pages. Um, but uh, yeah. All right. Have a great day and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.